Understanding cost accounting, fixed and variable costs, break even, and CVP analysis. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. You'll see our email and our phone number listed here, our website and our YouTube channel are at the end of the video. So this is our introduction to cost accounting. We need to think first about fixed and variable costs. Fixed costs are costs incurred that are unrelated to the production and sales or, or other measures of activity. These are the costs that happen no matter what. So if you think about your own life, utility costs, interest on a loan, costs that occur with the passage of time are a good example of some of the fixed costs. Variable costs are costs incurred that are related to production or sales or some other measure of activity. So if you're making Levi's jeans, the cost of denim, that's a variable cost, depends on how many jeans you're making and selling. Labor costs, if you're at the Chrysler plant making cars, your labor costs depend on how many cars you're making. That brings us to a break-even formula at the bottom of the page. If we want to figure out how much we need to sell to make a certain amount of money, we need to consider our fixed costs, our variable costs, and our profit. And that has to all add up to the amount of stuff that we've sold, and you're going to see an example in just a minute. So here's my example. We've all probably been to a trade show, seen one advertised on TV. Dave is displaying his software at an industry trade show. He's paying a fee of $1,000 for space at the show. So he's got a booth, people are going to walk by, and he's going to try to sell them his software. Each copy of his software costs Dave $50. He plans to sell the software for $80 a unit. He would like to earn $500 at the show. He thinks that's a reasonable goal for the time and expense he's incurring. Here's the question. How many units of the software does Dave need to sell to reach his profit goal? Well, that brings us into uh, what we had on the first slide, cost, volume, profit analysis. Let's assume that X is the number of units sold. There's the formula that we had on the prior slide for break even. Well, Dave's got that $50 free, and we're going to say that X is the number of units sold. So he's got his $1,000 fee. Each piece of software that he sells to somebody costs him $50. Bucks. We multiply that by X, number of units sold. We throw in the profit he's trying to make, and that all equals sales. And sales is the $80 sale price plus X, the number of units sold. So if we do the math, we subtract 50x from each side, we add the 1,000 and the 500 together, 1,500 equals 30x, and x equals 50 units. So what does that mean? What that means is if Dave sells 50 units, he will cover all of his costs, fixed and variable, and he'll have a profit of $500. But he has to hit 50 units to make that happen. That brings us to a new term, contribution margin. Now, if you look on the net in a lot of different places, there's this definition of contribution margin. Marginal profit per unit sold. Put another way, each unit you sell does two things. I think this is a clearer way to explain it. First of all, the, th the sale of a piece of software, in this case, covers your fixed cost, the fee for the show space. Once you get past that, the sales add to your profit. Think about Dave's situation. He has sunk $1,000 into the show. He spent that money regardless of how many units he sells. In Dave's mind, he must first sell enough units to cover his fixed costs so he doesn't walk out of the trade show with a loss. In fact, we call these costs sunk costs, costs that you can't get back. The variable cost, each unit of the software, is less important. If he doesn't sell any units of software, he takes them with him to the next show. Uh, no harm, no foul. He can keep those variable costs from being incurred if he sells nothing. I like to look at contribution margin as unit or per unit contribution margin. And in this case, it's the $80 sale price less the $50 unit cost or $30 a unit. So what happens to that $30 a unit? Well, $30 a unit first 
has to cover his $1,000 fee. And once he's done that, he needs to close enough sales to earn the $500. So I think of covering the cost first, the fixed cost, then thinking about the profit. And note that that $80 sale less $50 unit cost, that's the variable unit cost. So the math of 50 units sold is a $1,000 fee. $50 times 50 units, there's your variable cost. Add the $500 profit, and all that has to equal $80 sale price times 50 units, and you can see that the math works, and it does. That's our introduction to cost accounting. You'll find part two on YouTube. For live tutoring and live chat sessions, you can go to our website, stltest.net. Here's our email and our phone number. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.